So I thought it'd be interesting to do some streaming of old BBC Micro games using a real BBC Micro and Cub Monitor. So this was all going to go on Twitch. Um, that's kind of why I've got this weird setup with a mirror here for, for, for the sort of picture-in-picture, picture, because I thought that was a more retro way of doing it than doing an overlay in OBS, for example. So the purpose of this recording was really to test the streaming setup uh, to see how good the audio levels were um, and to make sure that the video was going to be working okay as well. Now, what actually happened was the uh, playthrough of Quest that I was doing uh, ended up going rather well, so I thought I would actually just publish this video as is on YouTube. So there are still some issues, I think, with like the audio quality, for example. I think my voice is too quiet for most of the stream compared to the computer. And the video is okay, but it could probably be better with a bit more tuning. Um, however, because the playthrough went so well, I thought I'd just publish it anyway. Um, and uh, so, yeah, here it is. Uh, do like and subscribe if you'd like to see more of this kind of thing. And if you're interested in me streaming retro games uh, on a real BBC Micro, then check out my Twitch channel. It's gfoot360 on Twitch. There's nothing there yet, but hopefully sometime soon there will be. So hit, give me a follow on there and you'll know when that happens. I'll put a link in the video description as well. But without further ado, let's get to Quest. So we're gonna, I'm going to start out by playing a game called Quest. Um, this is by a guy called Tony Oakden, um, and he's done several adventure-style games for the BBC Micro. Um, this is one I had when I was a child. I haven't played his other ones at all, but I thought I'd give this one a go first, and um, I've been looking into how to complete it, so I should have a pretty good idea of where to go and what to do. It's a fairly standard uh, Citadel-style kind of progression in the game. You move around from screen to screen and there's a bunch of objects and things you have to pick up to do various things with just like most adventure games of the day used to have um, one fairly unique feature that, that this game has is that your character actually has a jetpack um, I actually used it on the first screen but I didn't tell you about it but It's a bit tricky to get so I have to jump a bit when I do it. The jetpack only works on screens that have a giant triangle kind of pattern in them. So none of these actually have that pattern, but the start screen did. And this screen has one in it has two of the triangles, one in each corner of the screen. I'm not actually going to hang around in here though. These bats chase me if I get close to them and I need to stay a certain distance away from them. No jetpack in here because it's a platform uh, kind of level that one. This is an interesting one called the time warp and the game speed actually changes dynamically while you're in this room. You can probably see it's going really fast now. Maybe it was going slow at the start. This is the door to the chapel. All these screens have the little triangle in them, so I can use the jetpack here and get rid of that. I'm taking a little bit of damage from those blue things when I do that, but that's, that's okay. Um, the, the, the real danger in these screens is those little things which are going diagonally, because they will they will home in on me if I get close to them, and then they will really kill me. Uh, the big blue things don't really do much damage if you just touch them a little bit. So this thing in the top corner of the screen here is a is a password, as it says. And it means that password number five is Otter. Um, and there are various things in the game that you can only do by using the right passwords. And it's not enough for you to personally know the password, your character has to know it. So the fact that I've gone past that screen means my character now knows password five. So when the time comes, I'll be able to use password five. Oops quickly. This is the bat room again. I need to wait for the bats to be out of the way, otherwise they'll chase me. Also, I have to not wait too long in here, because those blue things will come in if I wait too long. I've already been down this passage, so I'm just going to pop down here briefly to get out of the way of the blue thing. Now we're back on the starting screen, and you can see this screen also has a triangle um, thing on it. I can't remember what it's called. It's got a really silly name. Um, but that just means my, I can use my jetpack to go up into these little uh, hiding holes up here and avoid the worms. So 
we're going to head on down here. Um, we're done with the top of the level now. We'll let, we, we won't go up there for quite some time. I'm going down slowly here because I, need, I don't want to hit the ground too hard at the bottom. There's no jetpack in this bit of the screen. So now I'm going to go over here and just quickly put my items down and jump onto the lift. It's the quickest way I think of getting up here. You can get up here without dropping the items, but you have to be a bit more careful with the timing on the lift. And I can't be bothered. So I'm just going to come over the top here. That blue thing will home in on me if I get too close to it. It did a little bit there, but it's not too dangerous really. Come down here. I need to get on that platform and get out the screen to the right hand side, but I'm just going to go out to the left first, and this resets the state of everything on the screen. Um, and the reason for that is when I get on this platform, oops, missed it. Oh, yeah went off the screen again there to reset it again. So when I get on this platform it's going to take me across and I need to make sure that I don't get stung by these insect things and the timing is actually just right for getting through if you get straight on it. But if I didn't get straight on it I would probably run into the insects. That would have been bad. These are just silly platforms that go up and down. This uh, kind of pattern of slow and fast happens quite a lot throughout the game on various things, these platforms and, and the insect things as well sometimes. Just gonna wait for that one to go up a bit. And yeah, it's interesting because the way the game works, it reuses the same kind of level features again and again, but um, you kinda have to go through the platforms in different orders, which which means it's still there's still something interesting about it. You know, each time each time you come across them they work differently. So this is the music room. Um, this kind of thing here is like a little harp thing, a piano or whatever. And I can play music by standing on it. And what I have to do in here is actually play the song Three Blind Mice. Because that's what was in the optician's room. There were three mice in there. Oh, it didn't do it. I'm going to have to do it again. Is a crystal. I think they're, they're, at the, they're just at the top of the screen here. I think there's about 12 of them or something. Let's get that one. Also at the top of the screen there, there are three reactors just underneath the crystal display, just up here. And then there's uh, what? These are bombs that I have. That's my energy, which is kind of my life force. And there's a real time clock in there as well, which is showing the in game time. Oh, this screen has a password on it, so that only appears once you've once you've played three blind mice correctly. So back up we go, all the way back. You have to be careful going downwards in this game. Uh, make sure you hit the ground occasionally, because otherwise you can end up triggering the falling too far code and hurt yourself. So just careful touching everything on my way down there. Back up here, and we're back in the room with the bats. And I'm just going to get back in that watery one. The red ones kill you, but the blue one's water, and it's that's fine to swim in. Um, this time, I'm going to go out this side, and I'm back in the room where I left my items. So I'm going to go pick them up again. Jump over these guys. So that's the cheese and the key. Let's jump over that guy. All I'm going to do at the moment is just put them down here. I'm going to go down this passage now. Follow this worm. Actually, I'm going to wait a bit longer up here. And this room's got a, one of those jetpack triangle things in it. Transmogrifier, I think it's called in the documentation. I'm going to go now. Go through those guys without getting in, getting hurt. So they follow the same pattern as the elevator thingies did, but uh, they're actually insects instead. So now I'm going to collect the crystal and I'm going to try and get the card. Yeah, I've got it. Sometimes it's not. Sometimes I miss the card and I have to go round the long way and pick it up the other way. But that's the quickest way of getting the card. Uh, wait up here. I'm using the jetpack to move down slowly and control myself there. So now I'm going to pop down here again, and um, yeah, 
I'll go now, 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 and now. Oop, got hurt a little bit there, that's alright though. Tiny bit from the worm as well. I've got almost full energy though, so that's fine. I think I got that for getting crystals and things. So what I need now is the cheese and the card. I'm going to leave the key there because I'm only allowed to hold two items. And I need to pick up this key down here, but I don't want to use it in that door. Um, that's for later. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave the cheese and the card here and I can jump off those to come back up this way. So, so that's allowed me to take the square key without actually just using it in that door. I get the round key as well. I'm armed with both keys. I'm just going to hover around here for a minute. Wait for those things to get out of the way. And up we go. Double jetpack here to get high enough to get up here because this screen doesn't allow jetpack. And up here. I have to get past these birds, and these will come in on me as well if I'm not careful, so I have to be a little bit careful how I go past them. Fine. This is a computer terminal. And this is what the passwords are for. So if I walk into the terminal, it will actually say access denied, and that's because I'm not carrying the access card. But you can also see it says over there which uh, which passwords I've already found there. That's kind of handy. So I go down here. I'm off the top of the top left of the screen at the moment. I'm just waiting for these insects to be in a nice place. I'm going to fall all the way down here, hit the jetpack hard here to slow myself down because there's no jetpack in the next screen. Um, so I'm standing on this platform at the top left now. Jump onto the moving platforms and we can get all the way down to the bottom. And yeah, I'm going to wait for the first three of these to be low before I go. Here they go. And then I'm going to try and squeeze through. And now the same pattern as I did a minute ago. Oops, got hurt a little bit. So this room is pretty nasty. That bird thing will home in on me if I get close to it. So I need to keep my distance. And I think I have to wait for it to bounce now, and now I go down. You can see it homed in on me a little bit there. It started moving down again slightly early, but it's not very quick going up and down, so that was okay for me. So now I can come down here and open the square door. That's why I bought the square key. Still, still got the round key, so we're going to go keep going, and we're going to find the round door next. Jump over that guy, touching everything on the way down to make sure I don't hurt myself. Just clip, we just clip every platform. It's the safest way. So this is the ghost maze, and we'll find out shortly. I'm sure. It is a bit of a maze. It's quite long. We're going to go through this a lot of times, but you mostly take the same route. You're pretty much always going from A to B or B to C. Um, there's a lot of dead ends, but you just never go down those. Again, the goal at the moment is just to go and open the round door. Oh, there's a ghost. So I'm going to, to stun the ghost, or whatever it's called. I think they call it exercising the ghosts. I've only got eight stun bombs, so they, they, they're, on the, they're shown at the top of the screen next to my energy. So if I come in here, I'm going to stun this ghost as well. Now I can get the second square key out of there. Got it. So the, ghost, the ghosts will come alive again soon, so I have to be a bit careful. But I've got the square key again now. So basically now I can go all the way back to the square door and open it. That will allow me to get my access card and my cheese again. So this ghost is not really bothering me because he's behind me. I'm just going to make him come up instead of across now. Because then he can come up here and just take a longer route. I'm going to wait a little bit here for him to start moving down again. So the ghosts actually move... And, and to keep chasing you when when uh, they're off the screen, um, which is kind of advanced for a game like this, really. I might manage the ghost now. I, I, I managed to get him down enough there. So there's the ghost again. Jetpack up here. There's the second ghost. There we are. Both ghosts. I'm not going to have to kill them. Be 
because I am shortly leaving the maze. So they don't follow you through the rest of the level, they, they only stay in those screens at the bottom, the ghost maze screens. So we're basically going all the way back up to where we came. Jump over this thing. More of these moving platforms. I'm just going to use the fastest ones. Get up here. And we're back in this horrible room. I'm going to go very quickly through here. Just lots of jetpack to get up there without the bird actually hurting me. Again, I'm going to wait for three, the first three to be low before I go. There we go. And get down between them and then make my way across carefully. There we go. I hardly lost any energy on that. So jump on this platform, jump on this platform. There's my cheese and my access card, that's where we're going. Double jetpack up here because I need a lot of speed because that screen didn't have jetpack in it in the middle. So I had to make a lot of speed up there to go all the way up. Now we're going to go down here very carefully because of the birds. Stop between the birds. Oh, no, 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 no. Okay, you have to go off the screen again now. Try that again. Just reset their positions. Okay, that's good. Oh, no. Yeah, that's right. I didn't hurt myself. I thought I was going to hurt myself on the landing there because I didn't slow down enough. Anyway, that's fine. Lost a bit of health. Go down here. Bit, bit of jetpack to push on the landing and then jump over that guy. And down we go. And now we're getting back to where we left the card and the cheese. And we're going to have to go across that bottom route next. So we're going to open the door. Oops, no, no I'm not. I'm going to pick up the cheese first. Open the door. Take the card and just wait for this guy. And we can go through and over these vats. So the enemies on all of the screens are, are kind of timed. And when they move from screen to screen, I think the game also has carefully made them kind of cross the boundaries between the screens at roughly the right time, but every time you change screens they all reset positions, apart from the ghosts. Be clever. And I can jump over those guys. I'm not going to go down that passage to the right yet, because I need something else before I do. So let's go up here. Oops. Ah, I, keep, I keep walking off the thing I need to be on. There we go. Oops. So I don't have password 3 yet, so it didn't activate, which is a good thing, because actually I really need password 3 not to be activated at this stage. Going back up here, so the only reason we went down over those vats was just that we could come away with our stuff. Go down here, wait for those guys to move, and off we go again, double jetpack, get enough speed to go up there. And we're basically going back the same route we did just now. There's quite a lot of repetition in the early stages of the stages of this game. Come back down here. I'm just gonna hover over here for a minute. Wait for the insect things to come up. Down we go, down we go. Double jetpack to catch myself after the screen with no jetpack. And wait for the platforms. I'm going to get on the faster platform, which goes down quicker. Go down here without losing energy. Wait for three of them to be low, and then we can go. There's one bit of health lost there. Might lose another bit here. Usually do. Yep for the bird to go down and then I'm going to hover right by the edge. When the bird's on the way up, after the second time it hits the left wall, when it hits the right wall, oh, no, too early, too early, too early. Do that again. Yeah, this is, they, they, they home over quite a large distance and it's quite vicious. So now, I'm going to come down gently to get the worm out of the way and then I can go through. It's one of the harder screens in the game, that one. Um, but actually, once you know how to do it, it's not so bad. It's really scary at first, though. And I, to be honest, I figured that out by using a, an emulator with saved states. So I don't have the patience to figure that out otherwise. I'll just 
just tried it in lots of different ways until I found a way that worked and hopefully a way that's fairly quick as well so down we go here now we've got the card and the cheese um, there are two things I want to do down here one is uh, I'm going to get some more bombs and the other one is I'm going to use the cheese for something we'll probably do the cheese first here comes the ghost I'm just going to get past him and where the other ghost is. If I see the other ghost in front of me I'm just going to have to use a bomb. So previously I went up here. Uh, I'm not going to go up this time. I'm going to go straight ahead. There's the other ghost. There's the armory. So I'll leave both ghosts at the top for now. Okay now they can come down. Come down as well. And up we go. They move up and down really slowly and sideways rather quickly, so I kind of want them to be moving up and down more than sideways. So over we go here. Now, I'm just going to kill the ghosts again. I've got five bombs left, so that's okay. And like I said, I'm going to top up in a minute. So this mouse will be attracted to me because I've got cheese. And I can pick him up. So now I switch the cheese from mouse. the kind of actions in the game don't make a ton of sense. Oh, one of the ghosts has come back now. Both the ghosts. Wonderful. Come down here, guys. As long as they're moving down, then I can go up. That's good. Let's try and waste as much of their time as possible, basically. Now we're going to Basically, we're going to head down to the armory now, and that's where we can get our new stun bombs from. Let's get both of the ghosts moving down. Right, so, I'm using terminal 5 here, and I've got password 5, so access is granted because I've got my access card, and this has been activated. And what it's done is it's taken a little bit of energy off, and it's given me another bomb. So, I'm just going to keep doing this. So, I've got four bombs. I'm going to kill the ghosts and get full bombs again. So I, I spent a little bit of energy there to get some bombs, but not too much. That's okay. You go back up now. I'm going to go all the way back, basically, the way we came. Um, the key thing is we've got the mouse. That's what we came down for. Ghosts might appear again soon. I think they'll be fine because they're coming from the armory, so they'll be behind me when they do appear again. I think that's how it works. I think the time at the top of the screen says 11.08 now. Uh, that's not too bad. Um, there is a special thing that happens at 12 o'clock, so it's, it's pretty hard to be late for it. Um, you usually end up waiting for it, but uh, that's the only time that really matters on the clock. So this is just exactly the same as before, just going up here, use the jetpack a little bit there. I'm going to go straight, going quickly on this screen, double jetpack, bang my head and lose a bit of health, but that's okay. Um, it's better than getting caught by that stupid bird, or bat, or whatever. So three, straight across, wait, 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 go. Now I'm going to go up here, get on the other platform because it gets to the top slightly earlier. Double jetpack, I'm going really fast now, I might hit these guys, oops, just got through. And over we go. Back down through the birds, slowly at first, stop in the middle, let the one go right and then go down. Oops, bang my feet a little bit. I didn't get hurt though. So we're just going back down basically where we were before. A little bit of jetpack to cushion the land over here, jump over that guy. These things are pretty lethal if you do if you let them chase you. But they're, they're okay if you give them a wide berth. These big ones that go sideways, actually it's not the size that does it. It's the fact that they're going sideways, um, 
when they're just going sideways like that, they don't home into you. Oh, Jump over these, jump over these guys, and through we go. Collect the same as I did before. Jump over that one, stand on the edge of this, wait for the three worms, follow the last worm. This time we're going to go down this route to the right. That's because I've got the mouse. If I didn't have the mouse, I'd be getting stuck coming down here. Oh, no. ah! That guy homes in. Let's let's reset them. It's usually easier to to get through the screen when they're in known positions. Oh, I did it again. It's okay. Got a bit of time. Across we go. Down, down, down. Across over this guy. Right. So now we're at the elephant house. And this is where we'd, we would have got stuck if we didn't have the mouse, but because we've got the mouse we can jump behind the elephant and he runs away. And the mouse is gone now. So just wait for these guys to be in a nice position. And we're here. In my, in my head I call this room the insect house, it doesn't actually have a name. I'll come back to it in a minute. There's a nice big pond here with, with a worm in it and another insect. Come down here carefully. Jetpack works to go down smoothly. This screen doesn't have jetpack though, so be a bit more careful. Bottle. And pick that back up now. Using the jetpack here. Okay. Jetpack again to go over this gap. And up. Now these things are lethal. But they only chase you when they're moving sideways, so you just have to sneak past them when they're moving up and down. It's another one that took me a long time to figure out the, the right sort of way to do it without, without getting caught, so that's actually quite hard to do. Well, actually, no, it's not hard to do. Once you know how to do it, it's easy, but it's a matter of figuring out the timing. So go straight across here. I went off the screen there to reset these guys because it's easier to get through them if they're in that initial starting position. So I'm just going to go up here slowly using the jetpack. Again, need to be careful of these guys when they're moving sideways, but not when they're moving up and down. And I just want to go over here. And down, down this side. Now this is a horrible bit of the game. You need to stand on the third step up, and again, remember this guy won't chase me if he's moving moving vertically, but he will if he's moving sideways. It's very easy to get caught there by him. But that's good, I've got three. So, I need to head out of here to the right, really. Um, using my jetpack quite a bit in there. That's quite a tricky room to get through as well. So this is the chemical supplies room. You can see the left hand tank has sodium hydroxide and the right hand tank has hydrochloric acid. Um, and when you mix them together, you get salty water. And that's exactly what this terminal does. So that's terminal 6. I have the password 6. Uh, I've got my access card, so access is going to do is activated. So that's the general pattern with these terminals, and that's what the passwords are for. You can see, this is all ch changed into water now. So what I'm going to do is leave the access card there for a moment, and I'm going to take the eye. Oh, I also to put the bottle down and pick that up again. The bottle now is called salt. It's got salty water in it. Um, I'm going to keep going through here. Come back that way again in a minute. And this is the second music room. What we have to do here is exactly the same as in the first one. It's just three blind mice. But it's a bit more difficult because there's no jetpack allowed and we have a slug and the blue ball thing. So you just have to get your timing right so that you don't get killed. I could go through here, but I'm not going to. That's given me a password four and a crystal. So I'm going to head back. 
leave the access card here for now because I need the salt and the army at the moment for a funny thing. I'm just going to sit up here a minute, wait for the things to move out of the way. That diagonally moving bat is the most annoying thing in this screen. But it's okay, I got through. Just about avoid setting it off. Now there's two options here, one is to go down this way and one is to take a long way around. And this is quite a dangerous way of doing it, but I'm going to give it a go. Again, I need to move when that guy's moving up and down. I need, I need to not be next to him when he's moving sideways. I'll probably get caught by one of these things eventually, and you'll see exactly why that is. Oops. But so far I've done quite well with those, so you haven't got to see why it's so important to be careful around them. So the salt is for that slug, because you know how slugs like salt. There we go. And it ran away because I put salt on it. Let me just go through here. I'm going to go and pick up that crystal. And I'm going to let it run a few times. I'm really bad at the timing on this bit. I haven't practiced it well. So let's do that. Yeah, that's good enough the crystal and in here there's a golden worm. I'll get the timing right to avoid losing too much energy. I'll wait for them all to be low. Go up here and get the worm. I'm gonna go down to the right now. The other screen where I could have gone right on would have basically led me to this same area, but I wanted to get the golden worm first. I'll just go down here and wait for these guys to move out of the way. These these guys home in much like the birds and things do, but again, not when they're moving up and down, so I just have to stay out of their way when they're moving sideways. Okay, I'm going to go straight through here. It will hurt me a little bit, but takes ages if you wait for these things. So uh, I've got through there. I've got almost full energy now. Let's go up here. And this is a joke shop. In, in the joke shop, this is also a time warp. Time is going fast and slow and gravity changes depending which bit of the screen you're on. Which is very annoying. So when I go to the right here, gravity will be reversed. I have to start using my jetpack to stay down. Anyway, I got through. Okay, now I'm going to go back out again, but it's going to kill me. I hate this. Okay, jet back on to go down. going to let the time warp slow down a bit before I go any further. No, it went too far. Oh, God. Okay, if, if I go further, then the gravity will be unreversed. Let it slow down again just so it's a bit easier to do this next bit. Good. Now, in the next one, gravity will be reversed again. Oh, and oh no, yeah, that worked. Good. I'm through. Yeah, I'm not very good at those rooms. That's why I went quite slowly through it. Using the jetpack here. Always have come down. There's no jetpack in this room though, so I'm not going to be able to go back up there again. Down here is where the square door was. But we, actually can, we can actually. We can go back in here. Is that what I want to do? What do I want to do? I kind of want to do something else first, so let's go and do that. Go through the ghost maze. Basically going back to the start of the ghost maze now. Let's 
other ghost. There he is. You go sideways. Yeah. Now you can go up. Yeah. Now they're both in the same place, which makes it a little bit easier to deal with them. Both up. Both up. Come on. Yep. Good. So, bang. So now, now I'm going to go down here. So, password for terminal 3 is there. So, there's a couple of things I'm going to do down here. One is I'm going to go up and we'll come back. I'm going to go up here and I'm going to go in here. It says pray at noon. And I designated one of my bombs and it thought this was a reactor. It's not actually meant to be a reactor, but it counts as a reactor. Anyway, that said pray at noon, and that's what that's the thing you have to do at 12 o'clock. You, you have to pray. So. You guys can probably think about what that means. If I live long enough, I can show you what happens at 12 o'clock. So the other thing I want to do is just go down here to the Oracle Room. This is where you need the eye. And all the eye does is it means we can see password 8 in the Oracle Room. So I'm going to go back out again now. I'm going quite quickly through here because the ghosts don't stay dead for long. And now, I kind of want to go back exactly where I was a minute ago. Most of the ghost maze has jetpack support, but that little bit there doesn't. Oh dear, oh dear. Ghosts. I have to kill both of them at once there, though. So, something else I can do while I'm here, actually. Is, oh no, I haven't got the access card. I can't use any terminals. Never mind. I have to come back for that. So that's probably not a good order to do things in. But I wanted to use the eye, because then I won't have to carry it around with me everywhere. Though at the moment carrying it is actually quite useful. Oh no. It's gone. Where did he go? Never mind. Oh I could have got some more bombs. Never mind. Okay for now, I've got four left. I'm not going to need the bombs for anything apart from ghosts. So we're going up here. And what I'm going to do is drop... Oh, drop the eye so I can jump off it. It just lets me come back in here. So I need to go and get the access card now. Do I do I need the access card? Da, da, da. No, not immediately. When I've got the access card, oh, I couldn't have got any bombs because I didn't have the access card. When I've got the access card, which way am I going to go out? Do, 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 do. I can't remember. Well, let's just go in here first. There's a lot of water here, and if you spend too long underwater, you actually get hurt. So I need to be a bit, little bit careful. I'm going to go up here and breathe, and then go down. Now I have a worm. No jetpack in this screen. The worm lets me catch this fish in the same way that the cheese let me catch the mouse. So it attracts the fish, and I can pick it up. I'm going to need that fish later. So down here. These guys again don't really chase you. So that's the drowning thing there. So these guys only chase you when they're moving vertically, I think. Sort of the opposite of what the uh, insect things were doing. All I'm doing in here is getting password 7 and that uh, crystal. I'm not going to go any further into the water area. Probably going to die again a couple of times before I get out of here. See if we can get all the way up here. Oh no. Got it. I breathed. Excellent. 
Excellent. Breathing again here. <clears throat> Wait for these guys to move. And we're off. So now I'm going to go and get the access card. Let's so go back through this maze again. I don't like these things. Oops. Did it okay though. Wait for this one to go down, then jump over it. Let's jump over it before it starts moving. If I'd waited till it moves, I'd probably have got killed by it because it would then start homing on me vertically and horizontally. The access card was up here I think. Let's reset those guys. This nasty thing again. Just wait. Jump over it. Yeah. Right. This stuff is basically the same as what we did already. I've got the herring now, which means I could potentially swap the herring. I guess we should go and do that. It's over here. Oh, this room. Yeah, I can't go that way. problem over here is it's an, another time warp thing. With this one. There was a joke shot I mean, with the inverted gravity. For some reason that one feels a bit easier to get through, but we'll see in a minute. Anyway, so I have the herring and the card at the moment. And the herring scares this elephant. Now this room is also a joke shop. Which is a bit annoying. Anyway, I've got through. I've got the cross, so that's fine. Could go down here. I'm not going to go down. I'm going to go back up, I think. God. I'm in joke shop. So the joke shop thing basically means that the gravity is all over the shop and it's really hard to tell when you should use your jetpack or not. And you can actually use quite a lot of health like that by doing it wrong. And this one also has the time warp thing going on. Which is extra annoying. Anyway, we're good. We've got three. I'm going to go back down again now. So I've got a cross and a card. What am I going to do now? Cross and a card. It's not time to go to the chapel yet. Um, Do terminal three. Do terminal three. Right, let's do this thing next. Oh, I don't want to go down there. No, I'm not going down there. I'm going up here.
So the thing that's over this way is a crystal. And a terminal. I've got password 3 now so I can activate this terminal. Okay, so I've done everything inside the elephant house region, apart from one thing, which gets me a crystal. Let's go and do that one thing now. Which means I'm going to get back into the elephant house, even though I've just come out. This is relatively easy route back in. I don't have to confront my nemesis. So, I'm going to go over here. I've got the card. So, I'm going to, when I get into the ghost maze, I'm going to be able to get more bombs from the armory. That's probably a useful thing to do in a minute. Um, am I going down now? I think I am. Yeah, I don't want to go past the slug. Oh, yeah, I do. Damn it. Ah, I need to reset all these guys again now. Okay. Yeah, I'm doing pretty well here. Got full energy. And only three crystals left to go and two reactors. Oh, that slug. I'm going to go to the top. So this time we're going to go out of this room to the right hand side. Password for this. Oops. So let's reset that again and go right. Ooh, that was close. These terminals actually reset the screen when you when you touch them. And now I can't go back left from here, so I have to go right now. We're going to end up unsurprisingly back in the ghost maze again in a minute. These guys. Just, oops. This kind of thing never changes. You just have to follow the, follow the pattern that you've learned. To the left. I'm going to just blast through this. Couple of points of damage. These uh, these ones that go up and down like that, they don't hurt you much, even if you, if you, if you even if you push on them quite hard. So now I want to go to the armory, really get some bombs, because I'm probably going to use a few bombs in a minute to get the ghosts out of the way. So. Go to the armory. I've got the card, so it's going to work. Once I've got some bombs, then there's a crystal down here I need to collect as well. I couldn't get before. I'm not sure where the ghosts are. It's been rather quiet. It probably means I'm going to run straight into them in a minute. There's one of them. the other one. So now the ghosts are dead and we've got full bombs. Go back this way. Hope the ghosts don't reappear. And the main 
mostly going to go back to the entrance to the ghost maze. There's a couple of things I need to do over here. One crystal and one reactor. The crystal we saw before, um, it was in a kind of a locked room and what I've done is I've activated terminal 3 which changes the configuration of the walls down there and allows me to get the crystal. But critically it prevents me from getting to the oracle now so it's really important that you do the oracle before you activate terminal 3. So are the ghosts, oops, no jetpack in here, I have to jump. Okay, so next I'm going to go straight up, and I think it's terminal 2. This bit you just need to move, using the jetpack, move really slowly to avoid that insect thing. Back up here. So I'm pretty sure this is terminal 2, and I think I've got the key for that. Wonder, I think, yeah. That turned on these moving platforms. Which I shall now try to get on to. This is a reactor. This is what they're supposed to look like. The praying screen is not a proper reactor. Anyway, I'll destroy this one as well. You can see we've only got one reactor left there now, and one crystal. So we're really near the end of the game. It's also nearly noon, so all I need to do now is to go to the chapel and pray. And I've got my cross. So the quickest way is probably just to come up here. This is the old route that I took at the start of the game to go up and down before I moved the bottle and things like that. Boing. I think this is going to be a good run. I, I'm I'm not a fast run, but I'm gonna I should win. Which I've oh no, oh, just about made that. Okay, wait for three low, and then I can go. Word one, I don't think. No, that comes later. Down here, wait for the birds to go right, and the, t the chapel is up. So we're going back up to where the start screen is now, for the first time in ages. There's the last crystal over there. You probably saw it's behind a square door, and I don't have a square key, so I can't get that at the moment. But once we've been to the chapel, we can see how that works. So, it said we had to pray at noon. It's now 11.48. That's not noon. Okay, so it's, it's 11.50 and the chapel is locked. So if you wait on the time warp screen, time actually travels, I mean, maybe on average, seven times faster, eight times faster in here. I don't think it's actually related to whether it's going fast or slow at the time, but you can see the minutes are ticking up on the left-hand side there at a somewhat faster rate than they're meant to, about once every seven or eight seconds. 
So yeah, 11.53. And the door to the chapel opens at noon and it closes again at 12.01 so we have to be there at exactly the right time otherwise we're going to be waiting for 24 hours which wouldn't be much fun I assume it's just game over at that point because no one's actually going to wait for 24 hours I mean even standing in this screen time travels seven times faster so what's that going to be? That's going to be three hours standing in this screen for it to come back to noon again. Don't want to do that. So basically I'm going to wait for it to say noon and then I'll go to the right. Actually, oh there it is. So I need to get across there before it's 12.01. And we're in the chapel and we've got the cross, that's a good thing. So all you do is you stand on here with the cross. Oh no, you drop the cross, that's it. Actually you can pick up the cross again if you want to. Might as well do that. And you go down here. And there's another screen here. This is Terminal 8. I've picked up the password for Terminal 8 in the Oracle room. So you can see I've got all the passwords except one there now. And this room is the teleporter. And after activating it, when I go through... takes me to another reactor. Password one is Sally, so I can destroy this reactor. And that's kind of the last reactor in the game. Now I'm sort of stuck in this uh, entranceway to the elephant house, unfortunately. Actually, can I get back up here? Because I don't want to go down there. Can I get up there? Oh, I can. Oh, that's good. Excellent. So we can go back up here again now. And all I have left is that crystal that was in the start screen. But the most important thing is I have password one, which was Sally, I think it said there. So I'm just going to hang out down here a minute. Let them go out of the way. Double jetpack up here. This is all the stuff we were doing right at the start of the game. It's actually kind of nice the way the game pushes you back through the things you did at the start that you've got quite good at. So up here without losing too much health and we can use password one. There it goes and the door is closed. So we still can't get through to the crystal. But password one did do something. Oops, that was not so good. What did password one do? Let's go have a look at this side. Here's the start screen, and look at that. We can get through to the crystal. So once again, it's changed the configuration of the walls to allow us to get to the crystal. So now that we've got all the crystals and we've destroyed all the reactors, um, all that remains is to uh, go to the kind of exit of the level and the exit is where we picked up the uh, second square key from so what's the best way of getting there could go through the elephant house that's relatively easy through the elephant house I could go through the ghost maze that's a bit harder I don't like that screen let's go through the elephant house Still got the cross, still got the card, don't really need either anymore. All the, th all the things for getting to the elephant house are fairly simple to do without getting hurt, so it's a, it's a pretty safe route really. If I'd gone down the left hand side there I'd have had to deal with that bat again, and I know of 
been quite successful with it in this run. Um, I'm not usually that consistent. Well, maybe I am, but I just have the fear from when I wasn't as good. I've practiced this stuff quite a lot. So I don't need to go up through this screen either, which is nice. I just need to go down here. So one thing I haven't really shown is that there is actually another terminal and a reactor in the water. And I've sort of cheated a little bit here because by destroying the play screen as if it was a reactor... Oh no. I can drop the cross. Cut the eye, that'll do. Yeah, I need to get through there. Because I destroyed the play screen as if it was a reactor, um, I actually don't need to destroy the underwater reactor at all, and uh, that that one's actually quite difficult to get to. So I think I saved quite a lot by not going there. Let's destroy that ghost. And when I first came into this screen, at the top right hand side, there were three force fields. Or, or there were some force fields up here, but those are gone because I've destroyed all the reactors and taken all the crystals. So now I can proceed to the end of the game. So the whole thing, the whole point here was that this was the quest for the Golden Dragon. Um, you found a map and it, had, it showed the location of the Golden Dragon. So you're trying to find the Golden Dragon and it turns out it's a pub. Wonderful. So yeah, most games of this era didn't really have anything very spectacular happening on the end screens. Um, just uh, don't forget to enter their competition. Most people didn't get to the end so it didn't matter very much. And that's actually probably quite true these days as well. Anyway, that's Quest. That was not really a speed run, but it's a, I completed the game. Um, it's the first time I've completed that in one sitting, actually, without using save states. So um, it's nice that that worked. I was a bit surprised that it went so well, actually. Um, the few the few points there are actually quite tricky and quite random. Um, or rather, they, they, they require very precise timing, which I'm not very good at, but I did seem to manage to pull them off most of the time that time, so that was good. Anyway, I hope you've liked this. Um, I, it was meant to be kind of a streaming practice, that's the only reason I set this all up and, and, and I was recording it, and that's why I have the kind of uh, retro mirror version of OBS kind of it, video inlays um, on the right hand side there. Um, but yeah, I'll see how I'll see how the video and audio quality is, and maybe maybe stream something else. I was going to stream this, but there's not much point now. I've completed it. So yeah, if you're still watching, I um, hope you've enjoyed it. Um, do like and subscribe, and if I post anything else, you'll be first to hear about it. Or check out Twitch, because I maybe I'll maybe I'll start doing some live streaming over there too. My username on Twitch is gfoot360. I'll put a link in the description or something. I expect. Have a good day.